Well, we have quite an achievement to report to you tonight by some Allegheny County high schoolers and their science teacher. That's right. Channel 2's Dave McKinley reports how they are soaring to new heights by staying grounded in the principle of not losing sight of a goal as we continue to celebrate Western New York. In a classroom at Wellsville Secondary School, Ross Munson huddles with his senior biology students. So two in, four out, and it's a net of two, like I was telling you earlier today. They've been working on something special this year. We are testing the effects of ascorbic acid on the rate of regeneration in microgravity. It involves chopping up these planaria, a type of flatworm with remarkable regenerative properties. Long-term exposure to microgravity result in a lot of negative health effects like the of bone, loss of bone mass and muscle atrophy. Research has shown vitamin C can help mitigate that. So we're hoping that if the worms do regrow faster after being exposed to the vitamin C, that maybe someday astronauts could use vitamin C to help counteract the effects of long-term space travel. There's no microgravity in Wellsville, nor are there any astronauts, at least not yet. But there was a contest which came to Munson's attention sponsored by NASA to have such experiments conducted aboard the International Space Station. And I just said, sure, let's give it a shot. But so too did 2,000 other schools across the nation. We kind of just started down this path not really having high um, expectations to get chosen. And we're going against all these big schools with probably a lot more money than us that have a lot more resources that they could put into this. I have considered that. But Munson and his group were undaunted. I don't look at our students as disadvantaged because of where we are and where they are. Um, I set the bar, set the expectation. We put our best foot forward and, and tried the best we could. Laboring since September to meet the strict criteria for space. The specification given to us by the SSCP program was our experiment had to fit inside one of these tubes. December 7, 2017, started out as sort of a day of infamy for these six student scientists. The same night, we were supposed to go to a conference in Buffalo. And the superintendent called and said, no way, the roads are terrible. So we weren't able to go. Which was really a bummer, but I was kind of relieved because I was going to be the bus driver too. Oh. But Munson decided the best medicine for the disappointment of his charges was to let them in on something he'd learned only hours before. I had received the email earlier that day that we had been chosen, but I was told I had to keep a lid on it till 9 o'clock that night after the conference. We were coming to leave for the Buffalo trip, I see. and then he told us that we weren't going. He summoned them instead into their classroom where, as one who believes perhaps that it's best for scientists to make their own discoveries, he casually put that email up on the smart board. And I kept really kind of a stone face. And stepped back to observe. I had to read it a few times before I realized it was like saying that we were, that we made it. And they were obviously very excited as they should be. We just started like running through the halls of the school. <laughs> we, almost, we almost ran over a teacher, I remember that. You, you, you science kids are wild. We are wild. <laughs> and among residents, they've become the talk of this small town. They've really kind of embraced us. They've really, every time they see us, they're kind of like, oh, hey, congratulations. It's not going to feel real until we actually see the rocket go up. That's tentatively set for June 6th. Oh, and they won't be watching on TV. But we get to go down to Florida to view the launch, so. Are you kidding me? No. Late June, early July, July. we yeah. get to present in the Smithsonian. Yeah, we have to go down to a conference at the Smithsonian so to hopefully present our findings. To. Yeah. Oh, oh, that, just the Smithsonian. Yeah, yeah. so hopefully. <laughs> hopefully, there's a lesson here beyond biology. Let's set the bar really high and see what we can achieve. And in this, and in this case, you know, we shot for the stars and achieved it, so to speak. And maybe there's something to that, so to speak. Just outside of Wellsville, there is a place called Alma Hill, and it holds a distinction among all others in this area of the high country. At an elevation of 2,540 feet, it is the highest point in New York State, west of the Catskills. So in a manner of speaking, these kids have actually been closer to the stars than any others in western New York all along. I just couldn't be happier of where, where we landed. It's like <laughs> not even real to us yeah, yet. I feel real, like yeah. it's not. Until we go, I feel like. It's not going to feel real. Here's what does the pride of a teacher in his students. What's really most proud for me is that I've been able to stand back and truly just guide them. They're doing the work. that They're very talented, highly motivated. So it was the right group of kids to do something like this with and just 
truly pleasurable to watch them thrive. Dave McKinley, Channel 2 News. Uh, congratulations to them. And what a great oh. teacher they were fortunate enough to have also, right? The, everybody remembers one or two teachers in their lives. Yeah, that can change your life. I mean, right. An opportunity like that, I mean, it's really, it's quite an honor to be mm. chosen out of 2,000 other schools that were competing. Wow. Yeah, that whole experience may change their lives, and mm -hmm. kudos to them. That's a lot of brain power in that classroom. It